Hi, this is Katie Harp from Rebelsaurus, and today I'm going to show you how to design a Pinterest graphic template um, from scratch in Photoshop. And this is something that you'll be able to reuse for all your blog posts. So basically when you see um, like a blog post and it has one of those vertical graphics at the top of it, it's kind of like the blog header, but it's also the perfect size for um, a graphic on Pinterest. And you can actually make a template in Photoshop and reuse it, so then you don't have to keep redesigning it every single time. Um, so this uh, technique, I don't think this works in the free programs like PicMonkey or Canva, um, but Photoshop, you can get a free trial, or it's only about $10 a month, so I think it's definitely worth it. Um, and then if you make this template once, you can just go in, and I'll show you how to save it and everything. Um, and then you can just open the file again and save it as a new one and just edit the text and edit the picture and then you're done. So you don't have to keep recreating the same graphic. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do. So first you would start by opening Photoshop and then go to File, New. And right now um, the size for Pinterest graphics is about 735 pixels for the width and the height doesn't matter as long as it's vertical. Um, and the reason you want vertical pins is because they appear the biggest on Pinterest compared to like if you do a square, then it kind of looks really shrunken down and it's like a smaller size. So, I mean, I wouldn't recommend doing like a super long infographic length because at some point if it gets too long, then they do actually cut off the size of it now and you have to click on the full size. Um, but I would just recommend doing, um, so I'm going to do, okay, first make sure it's in pixels. And then make sure the resolution is, uh, I use 72 because that's what you use for websites. Um, though I guess if you're working with retina display, you could always use a higher resolution. But instead of doing that, I keep the resolution the same for all my web graphics. And then I would just do the 735 pixels for the width. And then the height, I would do at least 1,000 pixels. Um, I've also done like 1,100 pixels, and that looks pretty good. So somewhere around that range, as long as the height is more than, say, eight or 900, um, and less than, like, 1,200. So maybe, like, do 735 for the width, and then the ideal height would be, like, 900 to 1,200. Um, and then the 72 resolution, um, RGB color, and everything else is the same, and then click OK. So this is um, the new file in the canvas for your new Photoshop template that we're creating and as you can see this looks kind of similar to what all the other graphics on Pinterest look like um, because there are kind of standard sizes um, so from here I actually want you to go to file save as and we haven't done anything but I want to save it at the beginning because we're creating a template so I'm just gonna call this Pinterest gra graphic template and I'll save this in Have a folder for that um, and make sure it's saved as a Photoshop file that's the format and then just click Save okay so now oh I spelled template wrong um, now you have the PSD template so whatever you do here if you save it it'll stay as a PSD and with the PSD file it keeps your layers separate so if you do say like if you create a new layer um, then your layers would stay that way if you save it as a PSD compared to if you save your graphic as like a JPEG or something in Photoshop, then it flattens all the layers and you can't edit anything. But this way you can still edit all your text and pictures and you can, it's just so easy to do. Um, so from here I will start with uh, making a new layer. And then usually for Pinterest graphics, there's a photo of some kind in the background. Um, you might style it up or you might do uh, some solid colors in there to break it up. Uh, but usually there's some kind of stock photo. So I would recommend going to a site like Pexels, which is P-E-X-E-L-S dot com. And then they have tons and tons of free commercial use stock photos. Um, so I'm just going to do a search for something like fruit, and then I'm just making up a blog post. So I'll find something that looks good for Pinterest. Um, and just to go through a few of these options, so something like this that's black and white, um, that's not as good as something that's more colorful um, because 
the pens on Pinterest that get repinned the most are usually with bright colors, they're warmer colors, um, they don't have faces if you're using people um, and stuff like that. And you can use photos like, like this one or this one or like these two and it's kind of like styled like the pictures off or the subject is off to the side um, as opposed to like like this tomato it's just a picture of a tomato in the center so that's not as like designy as some of these other ones uh, but it really just depends on what kind of branding you're going for for your business or like something like this is really pretty because it's bright colors and you can tell what it is um, compared to something like maybe this one um, there's like text on there and it's hard to read everything and it's like lots of small pictures and like a black background so something like that wouldn't be good for Pinterest whereas something like this or like this or this maybe if you brightened up the colors um, so I I like this one actually flat lay pictures uh, where the image is taken or the photos taken from above are super popular right now so then you just click on free download and then just right click and copy the image and go into Photoshop and then go to file or edit paste and then here you can see this is the image um, it's a little too big so I'm gonna go to edit free transform and then you can see where these white lines are or if you're using um, because there's different color schemes for Photoshop, where this boundary is, is where how big the image is. So I'm actually going to click on that and hold, click on the shift button on your keyboard and then click on this, one of the corners, and then drag it in and then let go of both. And then kind of center this and get it where you want. And you can see I made it a little too small. So I'm going to drag that out again, holding shift and then clicking on the corner and dragging it out. And so for a picture like this, if you put it in the center, that's not quite as interesting as if you use like the rule of thirds, which is a photography thing, and you you kind of divide the picture into thirds and you put the interesting elements at one of the intersections. So if you imagine like a tic-tac-toe board, the interesting points would be like, there's one here, one here, one here, which is where you put the subject. Or something here so I'm gonna do it like that and then just uh, double click and that'll save the changes uh, and speaking of saving changes I'm gonna go back to file save and just click OK and then this is like saving the template along the way because I just don't want to lose the changes um, and then from here I'm gonna make a new layer and I'm gonna pretend that um, we're using some kind of like Okay, so this is like really bright pink and that's a nice color. So I'll create some kind of overlay and I'm just making this up as I go. Um, so I'm just going to drag, oh, I'm clicking on the custom shape tool and this is the rectangle. Um, so then I'll just drag a rectangle onto the canvas on a new layer, just like that. And then you can see it's not quite centered, so click on the Move tool, and then click on Control A or Command A on your keyboard, and that selects all. Um, and then go up here and click on this little button that centers it. It says Align Vertical Centers and Align Horizontal Centers. And that will completely center the box you just made. And then uh, on your keyboard, do um, unselect it, so Control D or Command D. And then over here, I'm going to change, so this is the layers palette that I have open. I'm going to change the opacity and lower that a little bit to maybe around 60%, maybe a little more. Um, so you want to be able to read your text, so it just depends. I think I'm going to do white text on top of this, but if you're using like um, a darker colored text, then you would want this to be lighter. So you could do like that and then do like black text over it. But instead, I think I'm going to make the pink fairly dark, and then I'm going to do white text. Um, so then I'm going to save it again by doing uh, Control S or Command S on the keyboard. And then I'm going to change to a white color. I'm going to start figuring out the text. So I like to drag a rectangle box onto um, the layer on top. 
instead of just doing the regular text, I actually just like drag a box on there. And then that way the text stays inside this box. And you might need to, um, you know, put in a little extra effort to make sure it's centered vertically because the length of it will be different for each blog post title you use. But I think it's better because then your margins are consistent around the sides. So I'm just going to come up with a blog post title like um, this is a sample blog post graphic. So this is using Railway, which you can see up here. Um, and that's actually not a bad font. So I'm just going to select that and make it a little bigger and figure out how I want to style this. So I'm going to do, let's see. So I have the characters palette open um, and I'm going to make the line height a little taller because things are a little cramped um, and you can see that the word graphic is cut off so I might make the box the text box I have a little wider um, and then we'll center it at the end so I'm gonna do the word maybe blog post um, in cursive and then I'm gonna do some other parts like this I'll do as light text and the rest will be bold um, so I'll do light and I'm just changing uh, the font weight of it. So I'll have a sample as extra bold in Railway, but you can use any font. Um, I just like to combine a sans serif font for most of the text and then whatever words you want to stand out, like I'm going to make blog post stand out, um, I'm going to do that in a cursive font or you could just use some uh, contrasting font that looks different than the main font you're using. So I'm going to look up different fonts and figure one out that looks good. And right now I have it as all caps, so I'm going to change that. Um, and then I'll make these capital. Um, and that's a little hard to read compared to the rest of the text, um, just because the font in general is smaller. So I'll make that a little bigger. Um, and then I also want the letter spacing to be less. So I actually have um, like 500 on my letter spacing. So I'll change that to maybe like 100. Um, and then you can see also when you mix different fonts, um, the line height is different, so you might need to do it individually. And like this one, I have everything at 72, but I'll change that to like maybe 100. And then I also have to change this one, make it a little bigger. And then I'm going to pull up this. So actually for this one, I decided to do um, I decided to do the style where the edges of your text line up. So you just, if you want to do something like this where the edges are, it looks like it's justified, then you would just adjust um, the size of each line of text and make sure they're on different lines so you can edit them like that. Um, and then you can also highlight something and then change this. And this is the spacing in between the letters. Um, and then again, if you're using a different font, you may need to change the line height on that line just to make sure it has enough space. So then I'm gonna bring in the box a little bit so I can center this and then click the Move tool. And then I'll highlight the screen again and click on these centering buttons. And then you can go back and adjust. I'll save that. Um, it's a little hard to read because we have some background stuff going on there, with like little polka dots. So I might make this actually a little darker, um, but not too dark because I don't want it to be solid. So just a little darker. Um, and then one last thing you might want to add to this is your blog name. So if you have a logo already, you might want to use that, or you can just use um, the name of your blog or the URL of your blog and put that at the bottom. Um, so I'm going to do that in Railway. 
and I'll do that as semi bold. I'll change it to all caps. Um, then I'll make that smaller because you don't want the blog name to be like super big. You just want it there so people know uh, where all the posts are coming from, and it kind of builds up your, like your branding and stuff. Um, so make that maybe bold. I want that to be really bold. Extra bold. Um, and then might do more spacing. Okay. Um, and then I'll center that. And then you can see it looks a little weird um, because this is actually perfectly centered, but now we have something at the bottom. So I like to um, actually take these two layers and highlight them both and then move them up a tiny bit um, if you're going to do your blog name at the bottom and that way it's the box is actually centered more between um, the blog name and this edge instead of centered for the entire graphic. Just do that. Finally I'll save everything um, and make sure you're saving it as a PSD and I spelled template wrong. Um, and then this would be the template that you can use for all your graphics. You can change the colors. Um, I would recommend keeping the fonts the same for all your templates and then just changing what the text says and then the background photo. Um, and then if you wanted to change like say this pink color, if you already have colors for your brand then definitely use those because you want the branding to be consistent for across your website and social media. Um, and then finally when you are ready to save this as a graphic, so you already have the PSD, which is good, um, then you would go to save as again, and then save this as a JPEG, and click save. And then depending on what version of Photoshop you're using, you might wanna optimize the size so it's not like 100% quality, and I'm doing like the optimized version, and click OK. And then that way you have a JPEG version that you can use on your blog post and then pin it to Pinterest, and you still have the original PSD file, which has these layers. So you can see this layer, that's the stock photo, that's the pink background, that's the blog title name, and then that's the name of your blog. And that's how you make a Pinterest graphic template in Photoshop.